there is we finished pouring the kitchen floor which meant mixing the concrete and then taking it with wheelbarrows through the uh, the temporary uh, church and then pouring it into the floor. The other part of our project was to actually dig and we ended up digging a trench from the back of the property all the way up to the street so they could lay in some pipes for plumbing and water and so forth. But the ditch had to have been almost as tall, I guess as deep as, as I am tall, but not as wide, maybe four or five feet wide. We dug it, we emptied it out, we broke up the concrete, we took the dirt out, we took the piping out, we washed the pipe. They took the ends off that were ragged and fixed it so it could be used again. We cleaned all that piping up, it went back in. They, we did cement, we made cement with sand and rock. Uh, you put it in a wheelbarrow, you carried it back, and you put it down in the hole. You covered it up, you put dirt on top of that, and another layer of cement, and there were three layers of piping, and each layer had dirt and cement on it. Here we are digging a ditch, and it's great. And it really was. The Dawson house was much nicer than I thought it would be. You know, I've heard so many stories for so many years about this Costa Rica mission trip and about the different places. So for me, it was such a blessing to be able to go there and stand on the dirt and breathe the air and to meet the people eyeball to eyeball so I could really understand what goes on down there. It was amazing. The accommodations were much nicer than I thought they were going to be. It was clean and airy and friendly and cheery and comfortable. Here I raise my Was neat. He explained things to us and, and while, why in a way it's so important that we're there, the help that we can give them and do and what he would like, he sees as an overall picture, not for one year, but maybe 10, 15 years down the road, visions that he would like to see and things that would happen. He's a man that uh, once you get to know him, it's hard not to love him. Uh, 
what they lack a lot of things in material things. I mean, but as far as having the spirit of the Lord, they're full. I mean, the man you have to admire. He worked. He got his work clothes on and came out and, and busted concrete for two days. Every day, every day he was around. Um, worked in the ditch with us. Swamp, you know, sledgehammer, shoveled, did everything. You know, we were, he was right in there, you know, with us working. Hogar Escuela means homeschool. Um, so it's set up for people in Barrio Cuba was the neighborhood that it was in, um, which is, from what I could tell, not the worst area, but not still not a good area. Um, and it's primarily set up for people in the area that need, you know, like single mothers and, you know, they need to have their children in school, they need to be able to work. So it's from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's longer than, you know, any other school. And of course, you know, the church is involved with it as well. Um, and they actually assist mothers who want to go back to school. Um, so it's a phenomenal program. And I was really surprised. I mean, I was blown away hearing everything that they do for the children. But then to hear everything that they also do for the mothers, I thought was really incredible. So it's a great program. Child care for working parents to leave their children in a secure place while they go to work. Um, Costa Rica is a type of country. It's a... I would call it socialism, but um, but one of the rules are in order to get the benefits, you have to have a job. So if they have good health benefits, but you have to have a job, and if you don't have a job, you don't have benefits. You can go to emergency room and get treated one time, and then then you're back out. So it's important to work in order to have the things that you need. And so that's what um, the schools, the care does. It allows the parents, the women, the single mothers to have a job so they have benefits and, and at the same time the children are secure. Uh, Bishop Monterosso said when he first went down there, the kids used to play in the street. And he would say, well, why are you here? He said, well, my mother's working. And there was no care for him. And you're talking, you know, three and four year old toddlers in the street. but. That's the only place they could, because if the mother didn't work, the mother didn't was, wasn't able to feed the children. Their, their poverty there is extreme. It, it makes our poverty here look like middle class. I mean, they have no Section 8 housing. They, to my knowledge, they have no food stamps. To my knowledge, they, they don't have an electrical supplement. Most of the, uh, right outside schools, you just see, they're just tin shacks. With, with no back windows, no side windows, maybe the only ventilation in the front door and a front window, with no window. I had the pleasure of being a English-speaking visitor from far away in North Carolina, and I worked with three different groups of children at Hogar Escuela. I taught the children some basic phrases and songs. We did a song that goes, Hola, hola, como estas? Muy bien, gracias. Y tú? In English. So, hello, hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. And you? And I pulled out my iPad and showed them pictures of my life. And I showed them a cat, and I showed them our church, and I showed them a picture of snow, which they had so many questions about. The snow is cold and snow is white. And we finished up our lessons with Jesus Loves Me in English, and then they sang to me very loudly in Spanish. Back, it was finished. It was up. The walls are painted. They're beautiful, bright colors. Oh. Marvelous colors. And of course, if you saw it, there were pictures. And the one picture is children with the rainbow. It's there, and while she was there blessing, there was a rainbow, and the Catholic Church's bells rang. And they felt that that was kind of a presence or an omen or something that was good for them. So when they did the picture with all the hands, they put the rainbows in it. Whoever came to do the picture did a picture of a rainbow and all the hands are in different colors. And on the other wall, done in a yellow, was a picture of children of all faiths, of different faiths in their clothing that they would wear. 
You can see the Muslim kneeling. You can see all of it. And it was just the most wonderful thing to see this building that was up and ready to go. And the colors would just blow your mind. And they had all had little areas off of a, a section. Esperanza Viva is the group of ladies who are HIV positive that meet and do their sewing uh, at the Church of the Ascension. And um, they, you know, sell their, their things that they sew. But they also, I was really surprised to, to talk with them and hear their story about, um, you know, all the other things that they do. And now they're with Redca, an organization that's recognized by the government of Costa Rica, which is phenomenal. Um, and, you know, there's, I think she said, uh, 35 women at that, you know, the Church of Ascension. But there's different groups all over Costa Rica. Um, so we met with one who had just had a biopsy done for breast cancer the day before. And she still came and spoke with us, which I thought was just phenomenal. Um, because she definitely was in a world of pain. Um, and she just had her breast cancer surgery. Then two other women were with her. And uh, they were telling us about how they do counseling. I think Esperanza Viva saved their lives um, for the simple fact that they didn't have anywhere to go. I mean, they went to the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church said no. And, you know, luckily they were able to find a home in the Episcopal Church. And I think that's just been a world of a difference in their life um, for the simple fact that they now have somebody to talk to. And um, they're not they're not shunned anymore. They're welcome in the church, and they you know have made friends, and they can help each other out, and uh, you know make some money off of the things that they're making and selling. And I just think that it, it really has been a godsend for them to have this program, and they really have just shown their gratitude for the program in the sense that they've you know spread it throughout different parts of Costa Rica and, you know. It, it was really a transformative and, and a powerful, fun experience. I'm so glad I got to do it. The companion relationship that we have with Church of the Ascension and with the Diocese of Costa Rica is something that um, so many people can participate in, whether or not they can travel to Costa Rica. You know, the, the prayers and the discernment that goes into this amazing transformation is um, it's really powerful and um, I hope that people think just because they may not want to pick up a shovel that this mission is not for them. There is so much that can be done here in the States um, as well as, as down there that, that just makes a difference and, and it touches lives and you know anytime that you're that you're reaching out to other people it just can't be bad. Call for songs of loudest praise.